So another very important uh, data source is, is global news. So there is a project named GDELT. So for the GDELT project, it monitors worth, uh, the broadcast, print, and grab news from nearly, nearly every corner of every country in over 100 languages. It, and it identifies a lot of entities, different types of entities, including the people and some organizations, locations, and sources and emotions. And we can easily use this kind of data set to extract like the policies or emotions or things from the news content. So another uh, very interesting and also very important data set is remote sensing images. So remote sensing images is usually connected from the satellite uh, based on using different instruments or sensors. So different use instruments or different sensors on a satellite have different applications, different usage. And here is an here is an example. So for this satellite, it's used to uh, monitor the monitor ozone. This is a detect of a detection of an an O2 concentration. You can see here from January and till June, the concentration is getting lower and lower. So based on and also we the satellites have other uh, use has other usage. So based on the remote sensing images, we can estimate the pollutant concentrations, land use categories, and ground materials uh, surface. So there is another example about the remote sensing image. It's a nighttime, nighttime light image. So based on the image, the brightness of the image indicates uh, can be a kind of, uh, it's always used as a proxy of urban dynamics. So for example here, so this is uh, two, uh, light, light time images before and after the, during the pandemic. You can see there's obvious uh, the change of the, the pixels. So based on the, the light time light image, we can be used for the urban development changes or urban activity changes and economic changes studies. And this is the last uh, data source I want to mention today. Every is the lot of the list. It's about literature. So for the literatures, we have the, uh, the NA Institute for AI and also WHO, they publish the data set every day. And for, for this, based on the literature data sets, we can uh, derive some, some index or some factors such as uh, subjects and themes from the papers. And more importantly, we, uh, for uh, some public health studies, they always use the meta-analysis to to estimate some index based on the previous studies this is really important, especially for some kind of situation. We, we, we are not able to get some data or we are not able to estimate some variables. It is really important based on literature uh, data. And here's uh, other resources, uh, other data sources using the models. And so here's uh, the list that we have the data sets that we have connected, including our China data, uh, lab and also GMU team. So we have worked together and collected a lot of data. So this data, as, as Wendy just mentioned at the beginning, we are not just to connect all the data, data sets to the cloud platform. We also do the standardization. We also do the integration based on the base map to make sure that this data can be comparable can be associated with each other. And more importantly, so we want to use this data, data set, we want to create a benchmark data sets for the COVID-19 modeling. Actually, this is a kind of advocate proposed by uh, uh, Professor Peter Song in, the, in our first talk. He wants to us to create a benchmark data set for any kind of, for, for the modeling. So each model can use, use the same data sets and the, the models can be comparative, com uh, com comparable. And, and, and secondly, we want to build a community models based on the workflows for the replicability, reproducibility, and extension. And third, we want to, uh, the platform also provide the data, uh, uh, want to provide the data models and tools together. So users don't have to go anywhere. The other place, you don't have to go other, other place to connect data or uh, find the tools. They can just work in one space, just one, uh, work in a one environment to do everything. And finally, we want to build a, a kind of ecosystem for collaborative research, educating, and training. 
And these are the, uh, the models that we have been created or have been replicated on the CDL platform. And this is one of the example. So one of our member, team member, he has, he has replicated the ESIR model, so proposed by the, US, uh, the, the University of Michigan team. And he also do some extension based on the model. He considers some spatial and temporal uh, constraints or some uh, factors in the model. So based on this workflow, you can see here, it's really easy to follow up uh, the this, this step by step and it's easy to replicate the process and also do the extensions. You don't, even though even though you are not familiar with uh, programming or coding, you can you can also run the workflows and and implement the workflow uh, implement the whole process. Okay. Uh, 